Hi everyone, welcome to Every Day. My name is Dee, and today we're jumping back into PlayStation VR Worlds to explore all the experiences therein. So, the one, one that's really popular and has been around since the early days of PlayStation VR, this used to be shown at a lot of the, um, a lot of the trade shows and stuff like that, was this Ocean Descent demo. I'm gonna go ahead and jump in. And they've really fleshed it out a lot since then. It used to be just like a really basic experience where you were in a shark cage and there were some things moving around you. But now they've added like narrative elements and voice acting and just all kinds of shit. And where are my headphones? Um, oh, let's use my controller apparently. My controller apparently is a flashlight now, so that's cool. And. I am not centered. That ball is supposed to be closer to me. There we go. So you just hold the options button, which is this button like above the square, to recenter at any time, which is really convenient. It's nice to have a dedicated button for that. And I want this on the left hand side so that these headphones will work as designed. You usually want the wire on your left hand side. Alright. I am good to go. Let's take a dip in the ocean. Got some nice water sound effects going on. Everything looking good. Everything looking good. Let's launch. Get my controller wet. Shake it dry. Okay, let's go. So if I hit learn more, what does it tell me? Descend through the layers of the ocean and experience incredible marine life all around you can be played seated or standing. I will be playing it seated. It might be a bit more fun if it were standing since you're kind of in this cage and it's a cage where in real life you would probably be standing or floating. Journey all the way to the ocean bed and experience a perilous story. Watch out for the shark. Okay so there's three different modes here. So this one, you're just hanging out in one place and just checking out the beautiful ocean life. This is like the mode for people who don't want anything scary. Wildlife tour is the non-scary mode where you just kind of sink through the ocean and see lots of cool stuff. And this is the narrative mode. Let's go. Uh, particle effects are so pretty in VR. Always, always. All right, let's go. Here I am in my cage. As you can see, I have full positional tracking. Everything's working great. I have these ballasts. Okay, rookie. This is a recon dive. I've got intel from my guy Connor that there was a lot of offshore salvage recorded in this area. Lots of surface debris. This dive should be more than worth the effort. I'm sensing it could be something big. No one's been exactly authorized to run salvage operations in these waters, so we gotta act fast. Turtles. So, there's no controls in this. It's a static experience. Um, okay, I'm sending you down with the recovery drones. They'll grab anything that isn't nailed down. I just need you eyes on to assess if there's anything of value once we hit bottom. So at the beginning, you can look up and see the boat that you're being lowered from. This one's great for positional track. Okay, so in this one, you're in this cage, and this makes the positional tracking work really well, because you kind of have to move your head around a bit to see around the cage. Hey, and JJ, can I get a systems check? Roger that. All systems A-OK, -okay, Cal. Establishing link to salver suit in three, two, one... Showtime. All right. Live and on screen. So my suit's online. That's going to give me oxygen so I don't die in the deep sea. These guys are just salvaging away. They are busy, busy robots. And the turtles are so Looks cute. Oh, like come back, turtle. All right, well, down I go. I'm really close to this one now. Sal32, how you doing? Bye bye turtle. I love the animations in this. They're really well done. Okay. We're reading a lot of movement on the 
Whoa. You're in for a good show. Hey, fish. Notice I have a flashlight right on my helmet. That's a plausible thing you might have if you were sinking into the ocean. So you can see what you're doing. Adds an element of dynamism. Something big definitely went down here. Look into the charts, it's gonna be a tight descent. But hey, you got JJ on the winch and he's the best in the business. You got company coming your way. We're getting multiple pings on the scopes. Company? What? That doesn't sound good. Oh my god. They're stingrays. Look at them. They're beautiful ring wings. Just gliding through the ocean. This demo is so pretty. This is a great, like, this is a great first demo for a lot of people to check out the power of VR. Just to feel these big things moving past you. I'm not sure how I feel about the effects. Like, the lighting is not necessarily the best. And the water can feel non-water-like sometimes. Like, you're just kind of looking through, like, blue-colored air. But it still, it lets you get stuff really close to you, like the cage and the animals that come right up to the cage. It lets you feel like you're in this otherworldly place you wouldn't be able to access otherwise. You've got control over this light, so you have a limited degree of interactivity, even though there's no controls. That makes it really easy for anyone to pick up and do, without having to understand how a gamepad Lots works or whatever. Debris. Something big definitely went down here, and it looks recent, too. Connor, where the hell have you sent me this time? School of Fish. I wonder oh, if that's algorithmic scoring. For a moment, Cal. What? Something's moving around down there. That must be my seismometer. Okay, so there's some kind of trouble going down, down here. Things are getting darker, setting the mood for trouble. That appears to be my radiation meter. I really like how they added these okay, controls. Okay, you may have to breathe in. It's going to be a tight fit. Keep your eyes open, watch the cables, and don't swing the cage around. What if I do? Whoa! Uh, guys? Guys? Shit. Okay, things just got very dark and cold. You guys are gonna kill me. What are you doing up there? Oh my god. Oh my god, it's a jellyfish. Bioluminescence. So pretty. Where are the others? I've seen this before. I know there are more coming. Where are your friends? Hey guys. Oh, they're just appearing out of nowhere. Whoa, they're all under me. I'm not sure why some of them aren't coming up through the bottom of my cage. Whoa, went dark there for a second. Got out of view of the camera. Gotta be careful about that. Oh, they're behind me too. Look how close I am. Am I the only one who's reminded a little bit of Metroids by these guys? Is that weird? Speaking of which, like Metroid Prime style game in VR would be amazing. I wanna like have my gun arm and be firing my, my freeze beam. You guys Water suck at your job. Through, Cal. Any minute we'll be clear of the cave. Those jellyfish just blinked out hey, above me. The cage lights back? Woo! Whoa! <gasps> Crabs! What the I love this part. Where in the hell did that come from? It's not on any chart I've seen. No wonder Connor was so damn cagey. JJ, any ideas on the origin of that vessel? There's no signature coming from her, and no report of anything at large going down in this sector. Guess we better take a damn good look at her then. Well, she's definitely oh, military. Oh, shit. 
this is recent. That's not good. In which case it won't be long until we've got company. There goes my radiation meter. So Okay, kill the damn Claxon. Rookie, this is really hot. We haven't got a lot of time, but your suit will keep you safe for a while. I wonder if there's like so we finally hit the jackpot and she's a damn nuclear sub with no known origin. Great. Just great. Looks like Connor's got us doing his dirty work. Okay, rookie. Let's hustle and get as much intel as we can on this wreck. I'm not walking away with nothing. Look how big this how are thing we doing is. Max dive time. Dive time's good, Cal. Radiation could be more. Of a there's problem. my depth. I'm like, whoa, shit. shit. The seismometer just lit up again. That's not good. Okay, keep an eye out for falling debris. We don't have a lot of time. Oh, keep your shit. eyes peeled for anything of interest. The drones will take care of the rest. I'm getting a strong heat signature off something down there. Could be the radiation source. I don't think it's the radiation source. Although it's very cool how the radiation is making these steam vents. I like that. That's like how nuclear power plants work, like the the radioactive stuff like heats up the water and then it goes through like steam turbines. That's how they make power with that. Whoa, that crate's red hot. Whatever the hell's in that container? Jesus. That's what Connor wanted us to find. Why are you guys just leaving me down here in the you middle of all this uncontrolled Careful, radiation? Whatever it is in one piece. Let's get it topside and see what we have. I got a feeling we're not the only ones after that crate. I'm literally wearing nothing but a diving suit. Hold this is on. We're picking up something large moving towards you. Why are my crews so incompetent? Oh. Oh shit. Oh fuck. That's it, just swim along. Just be on your way. Shit. Sharks don't eat people. Ah! That's my oxygen. You don't even breathe oxygen. What's your issue? Holy shit. This thing is huge. It's like as long as a car. Okay, good. They're getting me out. They're getting me out. That was close. Uh, I don't like the sound of that. Guys? Why can't I hear them? JJ, what the hell's wrong with that winch? Impact from falling rocks, Cal. Screwing with the winch line. JJ, for Christ's sake, we've got to pull them up. Oh, come on! Please reconnect the wireless controller. Looks like the controller just timed out. No problem. I'll just hit the button to turn it back on. Resume. So I have my controller set to turn off after 10 minutes to save battery. I should probably alter that setting when I'm recording. Let's get back in there. Oh shit! Watch out for falling rocks! Oh, why won't the rocks hit the shark? Come on. Shit. Oh, look at how that fin, like, moving right along the cage. Oh, that animation is so good. So good. Why is the shark coming after me anyway? <laughs> shit, shit. Dude, not cool. Yeah! Oh fuck. Oh fuck. That's my light. You cannot have it. Shit. Shit. Damn it. What's going on down there? Holy shit. I am totally exposed now. If that shark comes back, I am shark meat. And he's back. Fuck. Okay. Oh, 
incidentally, this is one of the few examples, good examples of a real-time rendered story experience that I've seen that are totally passive. Another good example is Sense of Pain. Shit! Okay, I'm cool. I'm cool. Okay, they got the winch fixed. I'm moving again. Sense of Peso is another really good example. It's kind of a real-time rendered music video that goes through the land of the dead. It's very cool. That's come out for the Oculus Rift recently. Shut! I don't know what this shark is going after me for. Whoa. No, 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 no! That was close. How about that for your inaugural flight? This was my first time doing this. Damn straight. Hell of a first dive, kid. Uh radar just picked up something inbound on our heading. Oh no. Looks like we've got company. And I have a feeling we have what they're looking for. Connor, what have you gotten me into? And that's it. So that was the basic scary shark encounter dive. I'm just going to go on a wildlife tour now. So I can relax for a bit after that. Talk about the game. So this is a great example of just a passive real-time rendered VR experience. So like there's kind of two categories of passive VR experiences. There's like the 360 video type stuff, which is usually live action or pre-rendered, like like a Pixar movie. And then there's the and then there's the real-time rendered stuff, like this experience. And the 360 stuff is a lot easier to create, and so it's a lot more common. There's no performance constraints to worry about. We are on our way. Make sure I'm doing fine here. Everything's good. There's no performance. Con hey, turtle! I remember you. There's my boat. So, um, and real-time rendered experiences like this are considerably rare because of the performance constraints. Because everything has to be modeled in CG, and you still have to make it like high fidelity enough to be convincing and engaging. So it's a big project to do something like this. A lot of ways a bigger production than just slapping down a 360 camera and then like recording some event. Um, and like a 360 live action recording is always going to appear realistic. Whereas to make a computer generated scene feel realistic is a lot of work. Like it's so hard just to make things feel like the lighting is right and like they look a little bit dirty like they would in real life. It's a big challenge. Like notice how they had to put this rust texture here on this bar. How they had to add all these little details. How they had to have all the little bubbles. How they have to have like the dust coming off things and have I actually haven't figured out yet if these fish schools are, um, if their animation is pre-recorded or pre-generated, or if they're doing it in real time based on schooling algorithms. If they did that, that would be awesome, but I kind of doubt it. Save on the CPU. I like the narrative elements that they added. Like, this is a cool experience, and I think this is a, a gentler experience for people who don't want horror. Um, but I like the narrative experience because it has um, a tension arc where things start out very cool and gentle to get you acclimated, and then they add some elements of suspense and terror and intrigue with the nuclear sub. And it's all really cool. And I would love to see, like, a full-blown VR movie done in a real-time rendered format like this because you could do it like some good actors some good real-time rendered models notice that they completely eliminated the models of the people from this experience and that saves them a lot of trouble because people are really good at identifying when people don't look right because we're people and we're good at that 
but we are not so good at identifying like when does a shark not look right when does a stingray not look like when when does a turtle or a nuclear sub not look like not look right we don't know we don't live in the ocean so they can get away with a lot just by leaving the people up on the boat and having them talk to us on the audio link um I like the bubbles. The bubbles, because they're in stereoscopy, they produce this this really nice kind of particle. Like people say, like particle effects are kind of the um, they're kind of the lens ray of of um, of VR because they they provide a very like wow experience. Time for a jellyfish. This part's still a little bit scary, but then you see the jellyfish, and suddenly it's one chess. One dress. Hello, jellyfish. This reminds me a bit. There was a um. There was a demo of Magic Leap, which is an augmented reality headset that's been in secret production for years, where they showed overlapping jellyfish like this onto the real world, and it was. It was it was very cool, but I feel like it was kind of. It was, it was kind of cheating because they have an additive AR system, which means anything they render will appear partly translucent in a well-lit environment. But jellyfish are supposed to be translucent, so they actually look good. But I'm not sure what else you could render that's actually supposed to look translucent. They are really all around me. Notice how in this scene, like, the whole background has faded away to gray and black and it's really blurry. They're really focusing your attention on on the jellyfish. And I feel like this is really what it would look like if you were underwater in a really debris filled section of water. Am I done? Did I finish that? Woo! Okay, one more team in. The coral reef. This is the one where you don't go anywhere. So it should load the fastest. Come on. Look all around you and enjoy the view. One thing I really love about this type of passive VR experience is like in some games, like last time I showed that luge game where you like steer your luge by rolling your head. And like that's not natural. You don't steer things with your head in real life. But looking around with your head, that's like exactly what you do with your head in real life. And I think that Generally speaking, you should not be activating things with your gaze unless... Oh, those fish are getting right up against me. Hey, fish. Hey, fish, come in my cage. Oh, look at those iridescent scales. Holy shit. Oh, it's flapping its tail. Oh, and there's a school of little orange fish. This one is pretty. Oh, see you later. What was I saying? Um... I was saying something about... I don't remember now. It's fine. Oh, yeah. I was saying how, like, I feel like, generally speaking, like, you should only be using your head in a VR experience to look around. Um, so I'm not a big fan of, like, gaze reticles to select things. Um, I would prefer to be using motion controllers or a gamepad or something else to do that. Although they are very precise and very fast and efficient so it can be fine for like a browsing experience but when you're immersed you really don't want to be using a gaze reticle just to select things um i am okay with using gaze to in um to to cause reactions in your environment like if there's a person and they react to like how when you look at them when you look them in the eyes or how you look at them or if you're looking away from them and that affects their behavior, that's like a realistic thing. That's, that would really happen in real life. People react to when you look at them or when you don't. Anyway, so this has been Ocean Descent. I've got all the achievements. I'm done here. This is a very simple, very minimal, passive VR real-time rendered experience. Uh, and it's still one of the most beautiful experiences on PSVR, in my opinion, that I've seen so far. I think, um, and it, it's probably one of the most realistic as well. And it's very accessible. It's the kind of experience that anybody can do. Um, so it's a good introduction to the platform. It's not as interactive as some of the others, like like the, um, uh, what was it called? The, the ball game, 
which involves a lot more kind of action, a lot more competition. This is a lot more passive. You kind of sit back and take in the experience. Um, and, and that definitely uh, will appeal to people who are looking less for engagement and more for just some chill time, some downtime. Anyway, this has been Ocean Descent. Let me guys know what else you want to see. I'm going to wrap up um, VR Worlds pretty soon. And then I'm going to be moving on to another experience. I'm thinking maybe Wayward Sky, maybe the uh, Batman game, maybe something like that. Let me know what you want to see most, and I will try to prioritize them. I'm also planning... Oh yeah, I just got a trophy. I'm also planning to um, at, return to the Rift at some point. I want to play through some of the seminal games on that, like Lucky's Tale, like... Um, um, uh, I'm blanking on the name. Damaged Core. I played through all of Damaged Core. I want to play through it again on camera. It is an excellent, excellent game. Really shows how a teleport shooter can be done effectively in VR and how you can build narrative around it. And it's really pretty compelling. Um, anyway, this is all for today. Let me know your thoughts and everyone have a great every day.